Greetings, foolish mortals. Hey nerds, what's up? It is October, which means it is spooky month. I'm going to be doing all spooky related content for the month of October. So if you're excited for that, why don't you press a like? I'm super duper excited. Got some thematic props and you can see my little village back here. My adorable fake chandel chandelabra. Mm -hmm. My fake candelabra. To start our spooky month, I thought it would be great to talk about some great spooky games that you can play throughout the month of October. Or plan the perfect spooky night with friends and family. Our first spooky game is... Horrified. Horrified is a cooperative board game based on classic movie monsters. All players work together to defeat any assortment of monsters. You can choose what level of difficulty you want by looking at the monster's stats or the rulebook for guidance. Each player is randomly given a hero, each with their own different stats and special abilities. Then, following the setup for each of your monsters, everything is ready to play. You start with the hero phase. Your hero can move around the town to get certain colored items to help with your overall objective. Once one hero has gone, it's the monster phase. You pull one monster card doing the following. You pull out the number of items at the top of the card and then follow the instructions underneath the main picture. You'll either move the monster additional spaces or bring out a villager. A villager can be a hindrance or a help. If you get the villager where they need to be, your hero can pull a hero card, giving them an advantage in the game. However, if a monster attacks a villager, the terror meter goes up. If your terror meter gets too high, you lose. However, if a hero is in the same space as a monster and a villager, the monster will attack the hero first. Once you follow the instructions, there are little icons at the very bottom of the card indicating which monsters are affected. Then, the monsters will move that many spaces and get to roll that many attack dice. You roll the dice, and if any have the hit icon, whatever person is in the same space as the monster will get attacked. If your hero is hit and defeated, you will lose your items and move to the hospital. If you roll an exclamation point, you need to look at the monster sheet to see what happens, and each is different for each monster. Work your way through the game and try to defeat the monsters before time or cards run out. And again, you can make the game as hard or as easy as you like, with seven different monster choices, including the Invisible Man, the Mummy, Frankenstein and his Bride, and the Wolfman. Overall, a perfect Halloween-flavored game. Also, I do have to represent my Hufflepuffs here. Anyway, let's get on to our second spoopy game. Mysterium. Mysterium is a cooperative 1920s murder mystery. One player plays as the ghost, who haunts the halls, trying to describe who murdered them, while the rest of the players are mediums, trying to discern the ghost's promptings. To solve the crime, the ghost must first recall, with the aid of the mediums, all of the suspects to present on the night of the murder. A number of suspect, location, and murder weapon cards are placed on the table, and the ghost randomly assigns each one to a medium in secret. The mediums have seven hours, or rounds, to figure out who the murderer is. The ghost will use tarot cards to try and give hints to each medium of who their suspect is. The ghost only has seven cards to use for each round. If the ghost doesn't like their hand, they can use one of their crow markers to get rid of as many cards as they want and draw new ones. Once all the tarot cards are given out, the mediums have a two-minute timer to discuss and interpret what the ghost is trying to say. The medium will place their crystal ball on who they think their suspect is, and the other mediums have a chance to vote as well. They use their tokens to say whether they agree or disagree with their fellow medium's guess. 
it's good to guess because the more guesses you get correct, the more clairvoyancy points you will earn and those points will help you at the end of the game. Just be aware though, each guess that you make, you will not be able to receive tokens back until the fourth round. If the medium's answers are correct, they move on to guessing the location and then the murder weapon. Once all mediums have the correct suspect, location, and murder weapon, as long as it's before the seventh hour is up, the ghost has enough memory to identify who the murderer is. Your mediums will lay their suspects out, and the ghost will, at random, choose what suspect is the real murderer. This time, however, the ghost only gets three cards, period, to show the mediums who the killer is. Depending on the medium's clairvoyancy points, this will help determine how many cards the mediums can look at to help them find out who the killer is. If the mediums all guess the correct suspect, the ghost can finally rest in peace. However, if the mediums guess wrong, maybe you can try again. This is definitely one of the most unique games I've ever played, and the artwork and setup makes it a very immersive, spooky experience. Our third spooky game Betrayal at House on the Hill. Also, if you enjoyed this type of gameplay and story so much, you can get Betrayal Legacy. Betrayal at House on the Hill is another cooperative game, figuring out what lurks up in the abandoned house. Each player chooses one of the many characters to explore the house, each with their own speed, might, sanity, and knowledge, which will let you know how many spaces you can move and how you can survive certain events and things that happen to each character. You start with three rooms, always at the entrance of the house. The more you explore, the more rooms you discover, and the more risks you take to experience events, find items, or even see omens. Every time you experience an omen, you must make a haunt roll, rolling six dice. As long as you roll a number equal to or greater than the number of omens you have experienced, the haunt will not begin. Once you fail a haunt roll, the haunt begins. You use the haunt chart at the front of the trader's tome to figure out what haunting all players will experience. And the trader may turn out to be either the player who saw the last omen or whatever the booklet indicates. Once you find the corresponding haunt and who will play the trader, the trader leaves the room to figure out how to win the game. The rest of the players read the survival booklet in order to figure out how they can win the game. Then the chaos begins. There are over 50 plus haunt scenarios, so the house and the game never looks the same. If you want a bit more story and lore, you can play Betrayal Legacy. where you can have up to five different families deal with the haunted house for generations. There are a ton of additional features including the deed to the house, whoever is the last survivor claims that house in the family. There are also callings, which grant each character a different bonus. Not to mention, there's a brand new bleak journal, which brings in flavor and story to the entire campaign. And there's much, much more. If you want a thrilling, suspenseful, never-the-same game type of game, I highly recommend Betrayal of House on the Hill. A few other spooky games that I don't own myself but have heard things about are Mansions of Madness, which has similar gameplay to Betrayal at House on the Hill, and one that I had talked about in a previous video, which was Friday the 13th, which was another version of the gameplay of Quartz. Well, I hope you all enjoyed my assortment of spoopy games and including the ones that I listed off camera. Are you all excited for the spooky month as much as I am? My husband and I are planning to get together with some friends and actually do a spooky game night. So I'm very excited for that and I think it's a great way to stay in and celebrate Halloween if you don't feel comfortable going out or just don't want to deal with people or trick-or-treaters. So anyway, thanks again so much for watching this video. I hope you guys had fun. I had a lot of fun. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, I wonder if I'm gonna be cut off. Let's turn off the computer again. I don't know why it's on. This <laughs> is gonna be so dumb. Okay. Greetings, foolish mortals. 
Try again. Greetings, I can't do it with my foot. So you might be thinking to yourself, or it is officially October, which means it is spoopy month. In order to celebrate the spoopy month of the month, it is October, which officially means it. <laughs> but anyway, to start off our spooky month, I thought it would be great to bring it back. Or plan the perfect, or plan the perfect Halloween or spooky night for your friends and yourselves. Or plan the perfect spooky night with all of these. Or plan the perfect spooky night. Or plan this. Oh my gosh, betrayal on the house on the hill. Betrayal at house on the hill. <laughs> Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.